Good morning everyone and welcome back to another video. Today is Friday so we're taking it easy because it's almost the weekend but I want to talk about something incredibly interesting today about the problems we had insuring the convent behind me. It was absolutely a massive nightmare um, but we'll get to that in a minute because we've got a few jobs to do in the office first so let's go and do that and then we'll talk about this insurance nightmare so let's crack on. Oh. No leeks. No leeks, no onions, no garlic. Lovely. So all you're going to have a gold plate you've one in here for Ryan. Yeah. Gold toilet for Ryan. Gold, gold front. This is his private... His private... <laughs> private front. Yeah. Only the best for our Ryan. We are removing this toilet in preparation for putting the flooring in this little mini ensuite, which is going to belong to you, Ryan. Yeah. All the time that you work here. Um, so yeah, we've just got to remove this toilet because obviously we can't just floor around here. It would look a bit strange. Ryan is the best. <laughs> <laughs> the floor's moving. <laughs> oh, here we go. Right, let's see it. Here we go. There we go, Sean. Here we go. Okay, on silly. Yeah. Which Which is the right thing. Hold your nose. There you done it, mate. Yeah. Keep going. He's only gone and done it. Oh, it's good. You can see the colour of the floor used to be. <laughs> yeah. No surprises? No. Very nice. Put your hand in there. Go on. See what you can find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there any gold in there? <laughs> that used to hide gold. <laughs> Alright, we'll put that over. Yeah. Not that you get any smells out of this sort of system. <laughs> but I am working down here, so we'll get all that muck up. There's a bit of dilemma. <laughs> Sean thinks that Sean. this is the original colour. Definitely. And this is the colour, it, this is faded underneath the toilet, but I think it's, it's the other way it's around. It's discoloured. Well, I think the sun's bleached this. You might be right though, that could have been like, they could have bleached the floor or something and the water stayed under there or something, I don't know, yeah. But that seems like it was the original colour, but that, I don't know. In my experience, that's the colour it wasn't. Okay, okay. Uh, who on earth would buy a floor that colour? I mean, this is marginally better, but you know, yeah. that. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't know. That ain't a natural colour, are they? You never know. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think, yeah. <laughs> Drop us a comment. <laughs> Toilet here, or? We're perfect. perfect. We're we'll plumbing straight out the, out the wall. That's it, you're fine. Well, we could just put a nice cushion on it. Oh, yeah. You can have it at your desk, Brian. Don't plumb it in. Keep your drinks in there, put some ice in yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Couldn't you? Could be a nice bucket. Yeah. For all your Red Bulls, Ryan. Sounds good. <laughs> so I'm just removing this shutter, which has been added. It's a slightly later addition, but the problem is I can't leave it here because it's in the way and I need to do some work behind it. I might put them back at a later date, but while I'm renovating my office, I want to remove them. Um, plus, I don't really want to close them because you get a lovely view into the chapel. Um, so yeah, I'm just undoing these screws, which are holding it on, and it should come off. I'm gonna keep them until we renovate the room and then possibly put them back. Oh, it's still tight, there we go. on and a switch because this controls the lighting in the chapel. I can turn it on, on and off from here. Thank you to Duncan for doing that. So yeah, I need to take out these bits and that side and put it back flush. So I'm not going to open it all up. I'm just going to cut these bits out. I'm not going to do that today because I haven't started the renovation yet. 
But it's a nice room, isn't it? It is. With a beautiful feature like this. I was really happy to discover it. Yeah. It reminds me of sort of like a ship's window. You see sort of the, the shape of it? Yes. Mm, I really like it. When we first got the keys for the abandoned convent behind me, we had a little issue. We were searching for insurance for it and we came a little unstuck. We went with the company which the previous owner was using and they um, went through, you know, all the details for the insurance and everything um, and they wouldn't insure us because the previous owner left the building uninhabited um, and just it went to wreck and ruin and they knew that because they knew of the building very well um, they were insuring him but when we got the keys they wouldn't insure us and like i said it's because the previous owner let the place fall to ruin um, everything was overgrown nothing was maintained the heating the electrics the plumbing they have all been turned off for about 12 or 15 years i think and yeah so they wouldn't insure us so then we decided to go with another company and we waited and waited and they came back to us and said no <laughs> and then we went with another company a local company in this town and we went through all the all the details with them again and they said oh it's very difficult are oh, we waiting for certain documents and things like that anyway it went to a commission where loads of other insurers sort of they sort of sort of argue or decide who's going to get what insurance on what building so it's sort of like a it was sort of like an auction whoever bets on different contracts you know if they, if they take the risk they'll get it and it went through a commission and they came back and nobody would insure it <laughs> and again it's because the building had been left for so long and it had no use it had been completely uninhabited it had been broken into numerous times it was all overgrown so from a understanding standpoint of that you can understand that they wouldn't insure it and i'd probably do the same thing but in the end we went with a company and uh, I'll explain about this because it's quite interesting. We're now paying 6,000 euros a year to insure the convent. And there's a lot of strict criteria with this contract. I have to be here most days of the week. I have to walk around the building once a week and check the doors and the windows that nobody's getting in. Um, check for leaks. And also they stipulated that all the electrics were turned off. Everything. They don't want no electric in this building until it was updated. So we've done that. We've isolated everything and everything that's been put back on has been checked and updated. So that was a criteria they demanded. And yeah, it's a really, really high price, high price that we're paying every year. And yeah, it's, it's incredibly interesting. And it was impossible to ensure this convent. Um, yeah, so that's a really, really interesting thing. And uh, hopefully <laughs> the contract for the insurance in a year when it expires, we can find a better company and they can come and have a look at the building um, and probably make a better price. Because during the quotes that we got from all these other companies, they were actually coming to the convent and walking around like this. Like they were surprised how bad it was, you know, from their understanding it's probably not a good idea to insure a building like this but yeah hopefully in the future we'll get the price down once the work progresses a bit more so yeah very very interesting story so here we have an example of the old electrical system metal box old relays and switches um, because the building had been left and not maintained or updated for so many years they had a huge issue with something like this because if it's not correctly earthed, this unit could burn out and set fire to the building. Um, so yeah, plus a metal case. It's not up to regulations anymore, but I think it's just come back into regulation where now you can use a metal supply panel. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, you've got, you know, everything. La vaisselle, which is the dishwasher. 
Frigo Congel, Lumiere, Frigo Lieber, L Lieber, that's a German brand. Yeah, Forno, the oven, Chauffage. So this actually controls the heating as well in the basement. So something like this, they didn't want turning back on because it's a risk to the building potentially burning down and that would cost them an absolute fortune, millions. Um, we were quoted a rebuild quote, just the roof, floors, as long as the masonry is still intact, if it did potentially burn down, six million euros. And I think they'd struggle to get it completely in like the same condition it currently is in at that price. So yeah, very interesting. When we first turned the water on at the convent, the water people, the water company came to the convent, they turned on the valve, and then he said, go and check everything in the convent. And from a distance, when I walked in, I could hear a waterfall in another part of the convent. So I walked into the pantry, and literally it was just raining from the ceiling. So another case of why it would be very difficult to insure a building like this is because it's been left unheated, unmaintained, the frost has gotten into the pipes and split everything. So when the water was turned on, all of those pipes started leaking and leaking through the floors. So we quickly ran around and isolated everything. But a prime example of why you wouldn't want to insure a building like this is just because water does so much damage to a building. If a building has a bad roof, it, it would literally take just a few years for it to destroy the interiors. So, you know, another thing that they wouldn't want to risk is paying out for dodgy plumbing that wasn't maintained. Another prime example of why an insurance company wouldn't insure a building like this are the entrances, the exterior doors. When we first viewed the property, most of the doors were unlocked to the garden. That means anyone could have jumped over the wall, let themselves in, and cause damage to the building, or even worse, set fire to it. Because there is an example, and I'll show you in a minute, of somebody who got into the building and decided to make a fire in one of the rooms, which potentially could have burnt the entire building down. So imagine that as a risk to an insurer. You know, it would be a massive deal, wouldn't it? And potentially they probably wouldn't pay out because the building wasn't secured. And that is up to the owner. So we've gone round and we have completely closed and locked all of the exterior doors. You cannot get in. I've even screwed the door shut in some places. Um, yeah, so another thing for an insurance company to consider. So here we are in the room which I talked about where somebody had caused a fire or started a fire. And I think that they put a metal bucket and they lit the contents of it, probably to keep them warm. Um, and it's completely charred the parquet floor in this room. Um, that would have potentially destroyed the entire building if it was left. Um, and it's caused a lot of smoke damage to the ceiling in this room as well. So yeah, just another case of why an insurance company wouldn't insure the abandoned convent. If you are thinking about buying a big building in France, a chateau or anything, please consult with an insurance specialist or broker because brokers are the way to go. That's how we got our insurance in the end. So yes, consult with a professional. Try and, uh, you know, just see if there's any issues that may come up once you've got the keys, because as soon as you've got, you've got the keys, it's, it's your responsibility. And if something happens to that building in that time, you know, you could lose everything. So yes, it's always safe to check. We didn't know that. We actually went through the same thing with the chateau and you think, you'd have thought we'd learned by now, but we didn't because we're young and we're silly. Um, so thank you everyone for watching today's video. Today's Friday, we got the weekend off. I'm happy about that. But we're gonna see you all on Monday where we're back to work and cracking on. So thanks for watching and we'll see you all on Monday.